friends, we gather on Awabakal land, and I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging, and extend my respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. And with all the church at this time, I pray for Makarata, for the coming together after a long struggle, uh, for the future of all Australians. We hear from the Gospel of Matthew, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, this is the great and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say together, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you have assured the human family of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> Please be seated for our readings. The first reading today comes from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 9. The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. 
I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abraham, Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram travelled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moreh at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he went on toward the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abram set out and continued toward the Negev. This is the word of the Lord. morning's psalm is 33 verses 1 to 12. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, for it befits the just to praise him. Give the Lord thanks upon the harp. Sing his praise to the lute of ten strings. O oh, sing him a new song. Make sweetest melody, shouts of praise. For the word of the Lord is true, and all his works are faithful. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is filled with the loving kindness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and their numberless stars by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea as in a water skin, and laid up the deep in his treasures. Let the whole earth fear the Lord, and let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord frustrates the counsels of the nations. He brings to nothing the devices of the peoples. But the counsels of the Lord shall endure forever. The purposes of his heart from generation to generation. Blessed is that nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose to be his own possession. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 4, verses 13 to 25. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share, faith, share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead, and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, 
or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the word, it was reckoned to him, were, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for, the, for our justification. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we welcome the gospel, I invite you to stand or sit as we sing together, Be still and know that I am God. with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you Lord Jesus Christ. As Jesus was walking along he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth and he said to him follow me and he got up and followed him and as he sat at dinner in the house Many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your te teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call, not the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years, came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, If only I touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this 
spread throughout that district. For the Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be ever acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> It's a lamentable uh, human tendency uh, that uh, we focus uh, too much uh, on uh, what we'll get out of it uh, rather than uh, what, uh, what others uh, will, will receive. Uh, and isn't it interesting when we think of Abraham, so often we think of uh, God's promise to Abram and Sarai, uh, which is so important, you know, that, that you know, they will have children, that uh, they will be the parents of this great nation. Uh, but we think too little about uh, the other part of God's promise, which is a promise uh, not uh, to Abraham, but to everyone, uh, that through Abraham... Uh, all people will be blessed. Uh, and when we think of ourselves as descendants in the faith of Abraham, uh, we must remember that uh, we too uh, are to be used by God uh, as a blessing to all people. Uh, and I think uh, these stories uh, from today's gospel uh, reveal something of the character of the blessing that we are to be. Uh, too often uh, there are those who are pushed to the margins and uh, you know, the worst thing is uh, when, and you know, sometimes we'll read stories in the Bible and we'll think, oh, well, that, that was then, this is now. And uh, as any, uh, anyone who is a family of somebody struggling uh, with mental illness, or with substance abuse will tell you, uh, you know, the, the worst thing is when people are made to believe that, you know, they're at the margins because they should be, uh, because this is somehow some fault of theirs, uh, some failing in them, uh, when, when they believe that, you know, they're at the margins because somehow they uh, are less precious, are less loved. Uh, and of course, that isn't how it is with God's heart. Um, we, we hear the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Uh, maybe another way to put that is uh, those who are at the edges uh, in human estimation are at the very center of God's heart. Uh, there is love there for everyone, uh, but those who particularly need his love are those uh, whom he particularly loves. Uh, and maybe this is the blessing uh, that we as Christians can be to the world, uh, to remind all the world uh, that uh, no one uh, is lesser, no one is less precious, uh, no one is less important than any other person, uh, that um, each of us uh, have our dignity uh, as human beings. Now, in a moment, uh, members of our Mother's Union are going to pray for us. Uh, the Mother's Union has uh, this event called the Wave of Prayer. Uh, the idea being that, that the prayers uh, wash around uh, the whole world uh, in an unbroken wave. Uh, and Mother's Union is a wonderful example of how Christians show uh, the whole world uh, that uh, they are loved uh, and how Christians bless the whole world uh, by the love of God that we have known. Uh, you'll hear of many different places for whom we are praying and sometimes the names are difficult for us to pronounce. 
Um, I often think, uh, you know, what do they make of Lambton? You know, with its silent hem, <laughs> you know, what, what, does the, what does the Christian woman uh, in Kenya uh, praying for, for um, you know, all, all the different places in Newcastle uh, with names that, that must seem uh, so exotic, so foreign and unfamiliar to them, uh, but we're united uh, with those women uh, in prayer, uh, in our shared faith uh, and in our common belief that we will bless the world uh, by showing the world uh, how we are each in God's heart. So, friends, uh, let's pray now. Oh, no, sorry. We're going to affirm as ours the faith of the church and then I'll invite those Mother's Union members uh, forward uh, to lead us in the wave of prayer now. Um, Mother's Union gets, um, you get assigned a certain sort of um, uh, time slot and normally that will sort of fall on a day that isn't Sunday. So, yeah, that, that's why we're having it now <laughs> because for the, for the first time any of us can remember, you know, our, our time slot for, for the Lampton Mother's Union has fallen between 9 and 10 a.m. on a Sunday morning. So, <laughs> uh, But what a wonderful opportunity to pray with Christians all around the world. So let's, let's stand or sit as we're able. <clears throat> We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic <coughs> baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we pray for the world and for the church. We pray for the Diocese of Mahajana in Madagascar. It is a large rural diocese where roads can be impassable, especially during the wet season, from December to March. We pray for their Bishop, Right Reverend Samuel Hall Spears, and for the MU members who are very active. They visit the sick in hospital and have a special concern for those with leprosy. They support orphans, the elderly and the disabled. They conduct training on the dangers of HIV AIDS and its prevention. They hold conferences on wedding preparation and they work to change attitudes towards violence against women. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer.
Mara. We pray for the Diocese of Mara, which is in Tanzania, 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 on the eastern coast of Africa. The region is very deprived. There are high incidences of malaria and HIV, AIDS and malnutrition, poor infrastructure and sanitation, and a serious lack of safe drinking water. We pray for their Bishop, Reverend Dr. George Okoth, and for MU members. Mother's Union holds Bible study, groups with discussions on family, marriage, youth guidance, counselling and basic care for HIV, AIDS patients. They train women and girls on the effects of gender-based violence, including female genital mutilation and child marriages and HIV AIDS, and they support victims. They are particularly concerned with raising awareness of and advocating for women's rights. They are involved in health education and malaria prevention. They also train young women in home and income generating skills, such as tailoring, cooking, growing home crops and raising chickens. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. West Buganda. We pray for West Buganda, which is in the southern part of central region of Uganda. The diocese is led by Bishop Henry Katumba, Tamale. Diocesan Mothers' Union's leaders are Jael and Janet. Mothers' Union members are working to raise awareness of gender-based violence, reporting offences to the police and seeking justice for the victims of their children. They are working to support marriage and relationships, training parents and educating in the areas of income generation schemes to benefit the families. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the Diocese of Khoi, Nigeria. Today, the northern Nigerian states are predominantly Sunni Muslim. Boko Haram militants are active, so life in the area is very difficult and sometimes dangerous when raids, bombings and kidnapping of girls occur. We pray for Bishop Paul Zemanine's wife, Rakia, who is the MU diocesan president. There are over 50 MU members in the diocese who help with income generating projects, skill sharing, teaching and personal hygiene, outreach to the needy and support for families who have lost their homes through violence. They are also involved in evangelism and prayer and fellowship meetings. MU in Nigeria has 60,000 members and its main aim throughout the country is the empowerment of women and girls. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for East Kerala. We pray for the Diocese of East Kerala in southern India. There are many dams in the region producing hydroelectricity for the state of Kerala. The area is very picturesque and tourism is growing. However, many people still live in immense poverty. Even though the economy is growing rapidly, women remain uneducated, married too early, worshipped as goddesses, but are harassed. We pray for their bishop, the Right Reverend V.S. Francis. Mother's Union serves many of the tribal areas provides marriage, counselling, which is compulsory for all Christian marriages, and has resulted in a decrease in divorce. It also initiated its income, generating projects such as making communion wafers, businesses producing items such as soap and washing powder. It supports a mission field in Mapora and is involved in training missionary wives and leaders. Its vision is to reach the unreached through its witness of love, unity, prayer, friendship, family and education. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. 
finally, we pray for our own Diocese of Newcastle, Australia. We have approximately 750 members throughout the diocese with 37 branches. We pray for our new MU Diocesan President, Elizabeth Bissaker. Some of our Mother's Union activities include general hospital visiting and the provision of packs for emergency admissions, visiting new mothers in maternity hospitals with gifts of booties and caps for their babies, providing baby bundles for disadvantaged new mothers, financially supporting NICU at the John Hunter Children's Hospital and providing coffee and care at the Children's Court. Some branches provide toiletry packs for the hospital. Others make comfort cushions and turbans for cancer patients. Most branches are active in their parish's baptism ministry, attending the baptism and providing gifts to the children. Awareness has been raised on issues such as asylum seekers, child exploitation, homelessness and domestic violence. Finances are raised for our overseas and northern outreach fund to support our sisters in places where the will to serve is strong but resources are few. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God of healing and wholeness, we pray for all those in need, those on our hearts, those that we hear about in the news, those who have asked for our prayers in the parish. We pray together for Ruth, Moira, Pauline, Patricia, for Reverend David and Helen, for little Rosemary, for David and Maureen, for Fred, Merv, Grant and Gary, for Pamela, Shirley, Bailey, Rhonda and Des. We give you thanks that you are the God of eternal life and love. And we give you thanks for all who rest in your nearer presence. We pray for those who are always on our hearts and those whose loss is recent. Particularly at this time, we continue to give you thanks for the life of our dear friend Ron. May he rest in peace and rise in glory. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus said, Whenever you stand praying, forgive, if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also, who is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Let us pray together. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Let us stand or sit as we are able for the greeting of peace. We are the body of Christ. Peace be with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you.
We're going to uh, sing together, Jesus Christ is waiting. And uh, although it's long, uh, there's not a single verse I feel I can cut. So <laughs> we'll just we'll sing all the verses. <laughs> uh, do sit if you need to. <laughs> Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Loving God, we thank you for this world of wonder and delight. You have given it to us to care for so that all your creatures may enjoy its bounty. We thank you that when we turned away from you, you sent Jesus to live and work as one of us and bring us back to you. He showed us how to love you and set us free to love and serve one another. We thank you that on the cross, Jesus took away our sin, all that keeps us from each other and from you. He frees us from hate and fear from all that destroys love and trust. And so with everyone who believes in you, with all the saints and angels, we rejoice and praise you, saying together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And now we thank you for these gifts of bread and wine. May we who receive them, as Jesus said, share his body and his blood. On the night he was betrayed, 
Jesus took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take for this is my blood poured out so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. You have gathered us together to feed on Christ and to remember all he has done for us. Fill us with your spirit that we may follow Jesus in all we do and say, working for justice and bringing your peace to this world that you have made. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours for ever and ever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come.
remain seated as we sing together, There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise. Sorry, no. No, no. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Well, friends, um, yesterday... It, it, it was like a scene from uh, you know, one of those 90s sitcoms. Uh, Emily was invited to two birthday parties <laughs> on the same day. Now, fortunately, they were sequential rather than simultaneous. Uh, and so you know, many of us kindergarten parents were getting to know one another. And, and so you know, the question comes up, you know, how, how, how do you fill your days? You know, what, what occupies you? Uh, and, and, you know, so I, I had to say a few times, well, you know, I'm, I'm actually a priest. Um, and um, mind you, at the second party, I wasn't actually the only mum who was a priest there. So the priest of Toronto was also there. But, um, um, but uh, you know, it, it was very interesting to sort of see the reactions. And, and you know, one conversation I had in particular sort of came up um, somebody was asking sort of, oh, you know, and, and you know, how, how big's a congregation? And, um, and, you know, and, and it gave me an opportunity to talk about the, the beauty of this congregation and, and some of the beauty of Christian life, but uh, particularly in a family-sized congregation, um, you know, be because there are, you know, perhaps 30 of us on any given Sunday, um, give or take, um, we know each other 
um, you know, all together. We, we, we travel together through the joys and through the sorrows. Uh, we, um, and, and in our time together, uh, we're able to make accommodations for one another, to make each other safer and more comfortable, uh, to make sure we can all access our worship, you know, whether, whether our mobility you know, is impaired for a little while or, or you know, perhaps is declining slowly. Uh, you know, whether we're uh, three or 93 and, and that brings certain, you know, certain uh, restrictions with it. Um, we're, we're able to, to help one another uh, be, be safe uh, and enjoy uh, this time of wonderful uh, fellowship and communion together. Uh, now, Bron's going to speak to us about the uh, ongoing process at, uh, at Parish Council, and uh, you know, th many of you have been a part of it, of you know, trying to, to make our processes for morning tea work for us now. You know, other things might have worked at other times, um, but you know, right now it's the dead of winter, you know, and all of us are feeling a bit achy in our bones, um, <laughs> and um, you know, and, and the things that, that are going to help us uh, all be safe and, and able to enjoy our morning tea together. So thanks so much, Bron. So, just a couple of things, because I think a few people were a bit shocked at some of the changes that were brought in. So, the initial reasoning why the Parish Council talked about some changes to morning tea, obviously Ruth came and we all started to enjoy our morning tea over there, which is fantastic. Um, but we thought to make it as easy and as fair to everybody, that we would create a roster so that someone could bring some milk and someone could bring some bickies. It wasn't meant to be a challenge or a competition. And if someone wanted to bring something other than biscuits, that's totally cool. But if you don't, that's cool as well. So the, the plan was that at least two families would do the morning tea on the day. One would bring milk and one would bring biscuits. And the other idea was that those people would actually not be serving the parish on those days. That each individual person would get their own cup of tea or coffee. So it's actually not a, it's just purely the person's just bringing some bickies, one person's bringing milk, and everyone makes their own cuppa. That's the plan. And the abled body people are happy to stay back, like myself, and clean up afterwards. No big, big deal. Or if you've got a good set of legs, pop in there with your cup and maybe your mate's cup and just wash up. So that, that was the plan and the thought process behind that, just to make it fair for everybody so that everyone has a turn and that not one person was burdened with the task. So that's what that was about. The other thing that Parish Council did discuss last week is the concerns for safety. And you may notice that this week we've actually moved the table from there, which was quite a small spot and probably not overly safe. And we've moved it to the back. That was actually Don's fabulous idea um, because it gives a small room and it's a little bit more safer. The other thing that we discussed last week, was, which was actually my contribution, um, is that I think that we should move away possibly from um, cups and saucers and actually have lidded cups maybe preferably with a handle. And Linda Wynne did actually offer to look into purchasing some for the parish, only because I've seen a few occasions where people have nearly poured hot drink on themselves. And unfortunately also we have little people that like to run in between people and people are bumping into each other, especially when we had the table there. So that was really concerning me. I don't want to see anyone get burnt or hurt. And I just think it would be wise if we had reusable, so not throw away, but reusable coffee cups or some kind of mug that um, allows everybody to have a lovely cuppa and enjoy each other's time together, but without the risk of anyone hurting themselves, because that really worries me. Chris Lewis has also purchased the little, what's it called them? Air pot, so that we don't have to walk through with hot water when everyone's here. Um, and you just literally... Yeah, that was the other thing. 
That's the other thing that was stressing us out. Um, the kettle is up quite high because of where the power point is in there. And I was a bit concerned, especially when I saw Joan like lift in this big, heavy pot of water. Like, you could really hurt yourself. A, you could give yourself RSI, but B, you could literally, like, that's really dangerous. So we're looking at it different ways that we can fix that so it's less of an issue. The AirPod was something that we're trialling. We're happy to take people's suggestions. We want to make it a beautiful, lovely time for us all to enjoy. But that was the purpose behind it. I didn't... I think some people got a bit perplexed by what the actual deal was, but it literally was if you could bring one person bring a packet of bickies, one person bring some milk, doesn't have to be cake, doesn't have to even be special, it's just so that we can all share some lovely time together and be together as a family and enjoy each other's company. So, And it was just purely trying to spread the load so that one person didn't get lumbered with having to bring the milk and everything every week. So that's what it was. I think it's reasonable to think most of most people here would be able to get themselves a cup of tea themselves, I would think. So I can't see any reason why we can't all just, you know, make it work. But look, I'm, like I said, we're open to suggestions. So if you have suggestions, please come and see me or one of the other parish council members because we want to make it this wonderful fellowship and chance to be together and spend time together. I think everyone really enjoys having morning tea, am I right? Yeah. yeah, so that, that was that. Um, the other thing which I wanted to ask everyone, um, if you're open to it, which I think most of you will be, obviously um, Kate and James are going to go be going through a tough time soon and um, we don't know the dates yet, but I did wonder if anyone here may be interested in doing some meals that we could give the family during the period that Kate's unwell and not able to do sh like things like that. If you could come and see me and then I'm gonna get a list from James and um, Kate as to what the children would actually eat. Uh, and then we can like make some little meals, prefab meals, and they can just pop them in their freezer and just help them out because it's gonna be a tough time. So anyway, those were the things, but like I said, any concerns, please come to us because that's what we're here for as a parish council, to actually serve the parish. And if things aren't working, then we're happy for suggestions. But those were the reasons behind the actual decisions and the list that was made. So, And I literally just went off the, the, the alphabetical order of the list. So literally, you're all kind of lumbered together <laughs> based on your last name. So, all right. Thank, oh, yes. That's a really great question. So Don has a list that of the people who had actually signed up for cleaning the church. I believe that several people had actually put their name down. In respect to the green room, we had done some investigations as a, as a parish council to see how much it would cost to have a cleaner come in. It's actually quite expensive. How much was it? $300, nearly $400? Clean, 200 weekly, but that's too high. Yeah, so it was 300 dollars for the initial clean, and then 200 dollars per week or per fortnight, which we as a parish can't afford. So, um, also, it's not that much cleaning. No, it isn't. It isn't a lot of cleaning. So, Chris Lewis has um, very kindly offered to do the green room one fortnight. I believe Daff has also very kindly offered to do it, and so has Gina and Jim. So the hall's fine. We seem to now have enough people to do that. But in respect to cleaning the church, um, my understanding is there was a roster at the back, and I, I was under the understanding that people had put their names alongside a date to clean. The church does look pretty grubby this morning. Yeah. So I didn't make a roster for that. I just purely made the roster for morning tea. Um, but I agree with you, maybe we should reinvestigate that and make sure that there is a proper roster out so that people know what's going on. I'll liaise with Don and um, we'll organise that so that next week anyone who has put their name down will have the roster so they know when we need to clean. So is there anything else anyone wants to ask or...?
No? Okay. All right. Well, we're here for you. That's our job. So, um, yeah, feel free to talk to us. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Broad. Um, I would say that church cleaning now, in this phase of our church's life, you know, we know that COVID isn't spread by touch. You know, it's not going to linger here from one Sunday to the next on a chair handle. Um, you know, the, the visible bits are the carpet. And, I mean, frankly, you know, we, we've all had the experience of, you know, we've got, it, we've got the carpet pristine and, and then people have walked in from their car and you, it feels like you can't tell that you've just vacuumed the whole place. <laughs> you know, it, it's, just, it's just that kind of a sight. You know, um, so I would say, you know, for those who are cleaning the church, you know, really, it's, you know, carpet sweeper or vacuuming, sort of the, the visible bits of carpet, and, and, yeah, that's sort of the main priority. If there's something else that bothers you, go for it. Um, you, you know, sometimes there may be sort of, you know, dust on an organ or a piano that, you know, really bothers you on a Sunday morning and you want to get at it. We, oh, I don't, I don't, no, we're, we're not having listening. Um, yes, yeah, so, so don't sort of, don't take too much upon yourself uh, when you are cleaning the church. Uh, the only other thing I would say is that, uh, you know, the, you know, all, always sort of, do a patrol for what bugs have died since you last clean it. You know, it's, there's all, you know, I, I could clean it one day and I come in the next day and there are dead bugs on the floor. Um, so, it, um, it, yeah, yeah, but um, don't, don't make that task too onerous is, is what I'm telling people, okay? Um, thank you all so much for, for your willingness to, to volunteer and to be a part of it. When um, uh, James and I are on morning tea uh, with Des, uh, and when it comes our turn, we, we'll literally just take the milk from our fridge, <laughs> put it here for an hour, and take, take what's left home again. You, you know, it, it, again, it, nothing needs to be onerous uh, or, or any more, you know, no one needs another rod for their back. Uh, shall we um, stand together? Uh, oh, yes, Don, sorry. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. And yes. Oh, sorry, Judy. Yep.
That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Yes, you were saying, Daphne. Yeah, this is having its procedure on yes. Wednesday. Yeah. Yes. And um, so we need to keep him in our We certainly are. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, friends, has anybody had a birthday? No? <laughs> oh, I, I think we've, we've cancelled birthdays, apparently. <laughs> that's, that's enough. <laughs> or shall we stand together, friends? The Lord be with you. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you, the ones you love and pray for today and always. Amen. We'll sing together through all the changing scenes of life.